Quite a horse, Albert. But for now, his place is with the army. Oi! Albert now I can't do solemnly swear that we shall be together again. Phoebe. Architecture is the medium that most influences us. Yeah. Buildings and what architects write about them is has always been something that inspires us and um, motivates us. And I think the person who is central in that is Johanny Palasma, the Finnish architect, um, who wrote a book called The Eyes of the Skin. Um, it's really an essay, um, talking really about decentering the ocular-centric nature of contemporary architecture, uh, talking about architecture as something that um, needs to be experienced as something in which you are rather than at which you look. The puppet is a curious object. It's not a living creature, it's a thing that strives to live. And as it strives to live, it mimics the way the puppet sees its world, the way it touches its world. There are two of the parallels between architecture and puppet theatre. We think of, of buildings as signing systems. Um, signing systems or emotional prostheses which are made, designed by the architects, but also inhabited and animated by the people inside the buildings, uh, who animate the buildings over time. So there's another similarity between puppets and architecture. This, this animation of something that's essentially dead, uh, the fact that a building doesn't live unless there are people inside it living the building. Um, and the same goes for the, uh, for the puppet. The puppet is simply an object until it is inhabited by uh, a puppeteer. And a story. The materials we use are very specific to the needs of the puppet and to the task of the puppet in the piece. Um, so we, if we have to make a very large figure, clearly weight has to be taken into account. And um, so we choose lightweight materials like aluminium, cane, uh, string, paper. And I guess one of the things that we're saying is that very often we are designing from the inside out. We're designing from the needs of the the puppeteer um, outwards, we're choosing materials very carefully. It's sort of incidental almost that the puppet looks beautiful. Um, if you choose the right materials, put them together well, the puppet will look beautiful. But for us, the way the puppet moves um, and the mechanisms of the puppet and the appositeness of the mechanisms is really what's more important than the way the puppet looks. Yeah, a horse must move like a horse in order for somebody to re recognize its horsiness so that they forget that it's an object and rather think about the idea it represents. We are, have expanded our company to uh, look after the needs of the ongoing Warhorse productions which are opening all over the place. Both of us are about to go to America to check on the teams we trained in New York and the touring show in, in the US. We can only really talk about our role as a puppet company. For instance, some, some puppet companies, like the Piero's work with puppets, he does incredible uh, satirical work, and that's very much one of the roles of puppet theatre today. The fact that we are bringing animals and the lives of animals into the theatrical space, um, and they're becoming part of the drama of our lives in the theatrical sense. I don't think that that's an offer that's been made before and I think it's one of the special offers of our company.